Hello. Um, I thought I'd once again make an attempt to provide you an overview of the next part of this course, the next module, uh, introduce the readings and suggest where else you might go if you want to follow this aspect further. And, and a lot of you have been asking what, what does participative inquiry look, actually look like? You know, how do you do it? Um, and that's, in some sense, is the focus of, of this, this module. The first reading I've given you is the introduction to the first edition of the Handbook of Action Research, which I still think, uh, even though I say it myself, is one of the best articulations of the, the basic elements of action research. Um, that action research starts, first of all, from practical issues. It seeks to resolve issues that um, are important in our living in the world, um, whether this is working with villagers in Bangladesh to improve their use of the land or um, to deal with their relationship with authorities and the questions of oppression, or in the other extreme, maybe, if it's a question of how do we work with a group of doctors to find a way of working more holistically um, with their patients. A whole range of practical problems. We start with the problems as presented by the people, as Paolo Freire says, and we try to turn these into problems that can be solved. So the second dimension of it, and th these can be taken in any order, and we've organised them in a, a rounded diagram in the book, the second dimension is participation, and we've talked a lot about participation. Uh, research needs to be research with people rather than research on people, because it's only if you're working with people that you're actually dealing with human beings rather than as objects. Um, it's important because it's liberatory. Uh, it's important because that's the only way you'll get decent data, evidence. Um, you can't do it from a distance. Um, it's important because if you participate with people in the living of their lives, the evidence you use gets tested in real life situations rather than in some sort of distant reporting situation, so on and so forth. There's many reasons for participation. The third dimension is um, many ways of knowing, um, which John Heron and I have written about specifically calling it the extended epistemology. Uh, you don't have to use the long words, you can just think of many ways of knowing. Traditional science tends to draw on measurement of different sorts. Action research draws on experiential knowing, it draws on different forms of presentational knowing, photographs or drawings or stories. It does importantly deal with, present, uh, with propositional knowing, with ideas, either the ideas that develop within a community or the ideas that it may draw upon um, in order to make sense of, of what it's doing. Um, and practical knowing. Practical knowing being the, as John Heron wrote once, uh, quality is the primacy of the practical. The whole point of action research isn't to understand the world, but to change it, to borrow from Karl Marx, if I may do so, um, and many other people saying the same kind of thing. The fourth dimension is working for worthwhile purposes. So there is a moral or an ethical dimension to action research. And this, this is really where we're contrasting it with traditional orthodox inquiry where, as many of you have written in your papers, the idea of uh, impersonal knowing, knowing for its own sake, is important. What is important, though, in an action research program? What should we be attending to now? And that becomes, in a sense, a form of inquiry um, as we work with other people. What is, what is, of, what is of, of, of importance? What is worthwhile at this moment? And in the course of an inquiry, that, of course, may change. We may start off with a, a sense of what we believe is the most important issues. But as we go through it, we find something else becomes important. And the central one is important. Um, 
Research is an emergent process. Research takes place in cycles of action and reflection, big cycles and little cycles. Um, you can't design an action research process project from the beginning. You can have some ideas. You have to have some ideas because otherwise you'll never get going. But it's an emergent developmental process that changes over time through the process of inquiry. And we'll come back to that again later in the semester. So that's one set of ideas. Um, and there's a second um, important set of ideas that have informed the way I think about action research. Um, and that is the difference between first, second and third person inquiry. Um, and um, first person research is the research that I do as an individual, moment to moment in my life, in an attempt to behave in a more collaborative and inquiring way. Most of us have been brought up to behave quite unilaterally, to try to see ourselves as right. Um, and the whole business of uh, learning to behave in a way that invites others to collaborate in an ongoing inquiry about our lives, not just in research projects, but in, oh goodness me, situations like the Residents Association meeting I was at the other evening, at our projects in uh, working with people as we go um, through our lives in all kinds of ways, are we acting in a way that encourages more inquiry or are we in acting in a way that encourages unilateral action? And the person, two people who I know who've done most on this is one is Bill Torbert and his notion of developmental action logics. And the other one is, is my old colleague, um, Judy Marshall, who talks about living life as inquiry and applied that specifically, among others, to her own experiences as, as, uh, in, with gender issues as a woman professor in a British university. Second person inquiry is then what happens when we gather a group of people together to work with us. And the classic example of this is cooperative inquiry. Cooperative inquiry, we draw together a group of practitioners, a group of, of doctors who want to practice holistic research, a group of villagers who want to change the way they manage the political affairs of the, of the village, a group of um, black women in Britain who are trying to uh, find ways of thriving in their lives rather than just surviving, uh, all sorts of examples. A small group, maybe a dozen to 15 people um, who engage together in cycles of action and reflection. And I've given you to read a specific ex um, a, a discussion of cooperative inquiry as a method. And the reason I've done that is because I think cooperative inquiry articulates well a lot of the principles that action research generally um, is based on. And then that's fine, you might say, but how do we change the world <laughs> with a group of a dozen people? And you might say, um, as Margaret Mead was supposed to have, have said, that it's only when a small group of people come together when they intend to do something that anything actually happens. But you've got to take it wider than that. And so there's a whole debate in the action research field, which I, I haven't pointed you to specifically, but you might want to follow up with. How do you, how do you transform that into large scale action? Um, there's lots of people who are talking about doing that. Um, Björn Gustafsson being one in, um, in um, Norway, uh, who's um, the appreciative inquiry people as well, who, are tr who sometimes try to um, engage a whole city community in an inquiry process. And large-scale action research of this kind um, involves using the, the large group technologies of future search um, and variations of that in order to create circumstances in which lots of people can inquire together. And it's really beyond the scope of this, this course to talk about the technology of that. But I just want you to understand the notion of first, second, third person of dimensions of inquiry being an important thing to think about. 
So those are the two papers I've asked you to look at, and that's my account of some of the aspects of action research. I've also put on a, a whole list of other resources you may want to look at. There's lots of examples on my, um, on my own website. I've also given you a list of some of the key people, by no means all of them, that you might like to follow up online and some of the links. Action research goes by participative research, goes by many other names. You can't really do action research without it being participative. That's why I'm stumbling over that nomenclature. So you might like to look around that and, and read about more generally, but not necessarily on this week, um, but in, in your future studies. So I'd like you to read some of that stuff. Um, I'd like you to hunt around and see what examples interest you and maybe look at some of that. But I'd also like you to, for the project writing, to do something a little bit different. Um, action research is nothing if it isn't about ourselves, either as inquiring into what we do or as facilitators, animators of other people. And we're really on the line here. If we can't expect other people to behave collaboratively, if we are not ourselves able to behave collaboratively. Um, and by saying that, I know I set myself up for you to say, hoo hoo, he's not behaving collaboratively. Of course, that's part of the challenge that we all have. So I'd like you to also, as well as doing the reading, look at your own lives. I want you to look at times in which you feel maybe you've done something successfully, an interaction successfully. I'd like you to look at other times where an interaction has gone wrong. And I want to reflect, I want you to reflect on your own behavior. It might even be worth recording. You know, he said, I said, she said, what, what happens in an interaction? And what are you doing? What are your attitudes inwards and your behavior outwards that encourages people, other people, to respond to you in a way which is collaborative rather than unilateral. Are you behaving unilaterally a lot of the time? Um, or are you finding those subtle ways of inviting people to join you in an open sense of what's going on here and how could we make it better? I hope that's helpful <laughs> by way of introduction and I look forward to reading your next pieces of writing. Thank you all.